What's up guys, in today's video you're going to be learning how to play your best poker when it matters the most. Now throughout your poker career, every session you play is not going to be equally meaningful. Sometimes you'll be playing a higher stake and you'll be shot taking a level you haven't played before and you're playing for more money than you've played for in the past. You might be an MTT player who's playing in a bigger guarantee or a bigger tournament than you've played before. You may be playing in a more challenging player pool against better players than you've played before. And all of these things create a response in the body that's very different to playing your normal grind. When you play a certain level for a period of time, you get very comfortable. You're used to what's happening and your body doesn't respond in any sort of crazy way and you can play good poker unless your opponents are annoying you or you have a tilt episode or something triggers you. But we'll not talk about that today because we're gonna focus on when things matter more, generally it means you're out of your comfort zone and there's more on the line, all right? So we're gonna talk about how when things are really elevated, when you're playing for more money, you're shot taking, you're playing in bigger pools, uh, kind of prize pools, how can you show up as your best self? Because I'm sure you guys, if you reflect back, it feels pretty different, right? It feels very different what's going on. So first of all, let's understand what is happening in the body. All right, so when something important is happening, when it's either dangerous or important, the body responds in a very predictable way. All right, so the body, we've got something called the stress response, and it basically reduces adrenaline and cortisol. It, creates, it activates the body in order to respond to what's happening in your environment. Now, this has evolved since our hunter and gatherer days. If a lion jumped out at me, the, the body would Reduce, produce cortisol and adrenaline to give me energy to get away from the danger. All right, so I'd use that activation to get away from the predator. Now, in the same way, if something is important on the line, like money, resources, my reputation, if I'm playing, if that's important to me, I get the same response in the body. I get adrenaline and cortisol floods through my body. All right, so even though one's about danger and survival, one's about playing high stakes poker, in terms of what happens in the body, is exactly the same. We've only got one stress response and it's universal. And that the re response that it's trying to get is activation so you can deal better with the situation that's in fr front of you. However, when it's coming to the predator, run of a predator, it's quite easy to say how that works, right? Because you use that extra energy and you run away from the, from the predator. But when it comes to the pork tables, it's like, well, how is this helping me? I've got all this adrenaline fr from my body. I'm trying to play poker. How is it helping? All right, so I'm gonna talk about a story that my poker athlete shared with me yesterday. And he was playing a tournament, I think it was an ACR, he said, called The Venom. Some of you guys may have played this. It was a $10 million guarantee, and it was a $2,000 buy-in. And as soon as he sat down to play, he felt very activated. His mind was really hyper-focused, and he was super, super engaged, all right? So he was very, very activated. Not his usual grind, he was, he was very, very charged up. So he was asking me, Adam, how do I use this extra energy in a proactive way? All right, so I started telling them basically about how the body's responding with this adrenaline and with this cortisol. And I started talking about how in sports, this is very common and players often perform at their best, especially elite performers under high pressure. So if you look at like a, if you've watched the documentary called The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, you'll see when he gets angry or agitated, he plays his best games. He's, he's, he loves the adrenaline flowing through his body and he plays his best uh, performances. And this player instantly went, yeah, when I'm playing sports, I instantly use that extra energy and I just run around. And I'm, if I'm playing squash, I'm chasing everything down and I can use that energy and put it into my performance because I move my physical body. But when I'm in the pocket tables, what can I do? Because I'm sat on my computer and I've got all this energy, what do I do? All right, so um, in one of my coaching modules, I talk about stress mastery. And one of the questions I ask in one of the worksheets is, when you're feeling activated in your body, you've got this extra energy, how can you use that energy for your performance? All right, so when I asked him this, he went on, he started thinking, well, I can start check raising these opponents more, I can push this guy around, I can three bet more, I can do all this stuff. And all his uh, thoughts went into, um, I need to be more aggressive with my strategy, all right? Now the problem is, for this player and for lots of players, when you're feeling extra activation in the body, so let's say you're playing high, higher stakes tournaments, you're already seeking to be more aggressive. You're already using that energy in a more aggressive way, all right? So in hindsight, when we looked at him, the best thing he needs to do to use that energy is to actually use that energy to think more, 
All right, so he's like, he's in a spot. Rather than being more aggressive, rather than playing faster, he actually needs to use that extra energy to go, uh, okay, wait a second, how can I make sure I'm, I'm picking the right spot? Is this the right player, uh, opponent type to be attacking? Should I be check raising this spot? Is it a spot I can turn down? Do I need to bluff up my stack here? Or can I avoid making a mistake here? So for him, because he's already being very aggressive, he was gonna use that energy in a way to think more. Is this the right spot, all right? So um, what you need to do to play your best poker when it matters most is to understand that the body has a physical response and the mind is more active, Active. all right? What I teach my players to do is that extra energy, I want you to channel it into your performance, all right? This is the inverse advice of what you'll hear from a lot of people. They'll say, uh, well, if you overactivate it, you need to calm down. Use some like deep, slow breaths and try and try and calm down. I say, nope, forget that. Acknowledge that your plan for high pressure scenarios, feel that activation of the body, completely own it and channel that into performance. All right, so you, you, what you do is you get the mind to go, uh, yep, adrenaline, cortisol in the body. Yep, I'm flooded with adrenaline right now. I have more adrenaline going to the brain so I can pay more attention. I'm gonna use that and channel it into my performance. If you do that right, you'll find you're super engaged. You have hyper focus. You've got more vigilance and awareness in those moments than you ever have during a normal grind. I am sure you guys have experiences playing maybe your highest buy-in or high, higher stakes tournaments and just playing your best. Just so engaged that you're like, I was just so switched on because you, the body's flooded with extra adrenaline and cortisol and the mind is using that as a fuel source. Now, in order to do that, you've got to get practice with that state, all right? So let's say um, your average tournament, average buy-in or cash game is $100, $100 NL, all right? When you play that tournament, all those, those buy-ins, you feel a certain way in your body. Your body's used to it. However, if I sit you in a 1K tournament, what happens now? All of a sudden you're like, oh shit, a lot of money. Oh shit, boom. So all of a sudden your physiology changes instantly, all right? Now, if you haven't practiced with this state, most likely you'll make a lot of mistakes. Or you make a lot of mistakes in that environment. So you need to get practice with your body being very activated, with the stakes being high, and keeping the mind calm. All right, by doing that, you channel the, the extra energy into performance. You acknowledge, oh, I feel a certain way. Channel that into thinking more, making better decisions, asking more questions, and you need to get practice, all right? There's no substitute for experience when it comes to this, and you need to get repetition of, first of all, number one, being in that state and feeling comfortable. Most people don't feel comfortable in high pressure scenarios. In all honesty, that's just like the, the summary of it all. Most people, when their body freaks out, their mind freaks out, all right? You got heightened emotions of um, adrenaline in the body, the mind gets really active and goes, oh, I don't like this. In reality, why not? Why, did, why does your mind freak out when there's adrenaline in the body? It doesn't need to. There's, not, there's no real danger. If anything, you're more activated, you should be able to perform better. All right, so by putting practice in that environment, you train yourself over and over to go, I'm activated, that's okay. I'm okay with that, all right? I had some players who were playing MTTs, MTT grinders, and they were basically playing big, deep tournaments a lot, and they weren't getting much practice with final tables. So every time a final table came around, they would have this adrenaline in the body, this activation, and their performance would drop off a cliff because they, they weren't getting much repetition with this skill set. So for those players, they actually started playing the daytime schedule for MDT players, which is much shorter fields, like smaller fields, and getting practice at getting to final tables. Getting to final tables and how does that feel? And getting repetition of how the body feels whilst you're at a final table. All right, so you get repetition of being in an elevated state and, and, be, and being okay with that. The second thing that happens is, when you get in a, that state more frequently, you desensitize it, all right? So over time, that becomes normalized, all right? So if you've never played, if you're a $100 regular and you play a $500 game, at first, that's like jumping into the deep end when you can barely swim. But over time, it's like, all right, it's just poker, it's just another tournament, it's just $500, it's just another game, and you, you get used to playing it, all right? So uh, by, by being in that state long enough, you get comfortable playing that level, playing that game, and all of a sudden it starts to feel normal. But at the same time, you've got to get used to uh, feeling activated and using it for your performance, all right? So if you're struggling with this, if you're someone's like, all right, I understand this, what, you, what you've got to do is you've got to acknowledge certain scenarios that you that matter more for you. So that for most players, that's going to be playing a higher stake, moving up a buy-in, or playing a more competitive player pool. In those moments, challenge yourself to go, all right, how can I put this extra energy and adrenaline into my performance. 
How can I channel that into my performance? And gain repetition with that skill. And once you start doing that, you realize, I can get pretty good at this pretty quick, all right? You need to be careful not to push it too far. So for this player, I was going, look, if you're extremely overactivated, so overactivation, it's on like a tipping point. Once you get like angry and you're raging, all of a sudden like you've got like a kind of emotional state that overrides cognitive processing. But for the most part, there's a very good sweet spot, quite a large sweet spot, where this overactivation can be channeled into performance. And you can play some of your best poker whilst feeling this way, because you're hyper engaged, you've got more energy, to use for performance. All right, guys, so if you wanna learn more about this skill, I've got a free PDF that I put together for you with the eight skills needed for elite poker performance. This skill right here is called Stress Mastery, and it's all about understanding activation zones in the body and keeping the mind calm whilst the body is activated. And I teach you guys how to do that in skill number seven of the PDF below. So click on that, download it, I will send it straight to your inbox. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click the like button before you go. There's gonna be plenty more from me very soon.